So after we have trained our model and we want to deploy them into production, get them out there in the real world, there's tons of different optimization frameworks that we can export our models into to both increase the inference speed, but also just to optimize it for a specific framework. So in some of the frameworks, optimization frameworks, we can actually like get up to two, three, four, even five times inference speed without really losing much accuracy. In this video here, we're going to take a look at a comparison between all the different frameworks. We're going to go into details with some of them, when to use what, but also just compare them side by side, when to use it, what are the advantages, and also how can we use it. So first of all here, let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the resource tab, we have the documentation tab. We have tons of different guides available in here, we cover most of it in blog posts, on the documentation, and we have everything covered here on the YouTube channel. If you go inside our guides tab, we have all these guides here on the left side. It's basically just tips and tricks on how to improve your computer vision projects, applications, how to build it, how to actually like take every single step in the whole computer vision pipeline. So if you go down to the model deployment options, it is very important that we actually like know how to get our models out there in the real world. How can we save on the hardware that we're running it on? How can we get our model to run faster without really losing much accuracy? And how far should we actually go down and optimize our models for specific use cases? So this one here is a very good guide to go through. So this is basically just a comparative analysis of the YOLO 11 deployment options. So we have all the different options here, PyTorch, TorScript, Onyx, Omino, TensRT, we have covered it in some of the videos. Also shows step-by-step -step how you can, for example, use TensRT to optimize your models for NVIDIA hardware, Jets and Nanos could also just be a server GPU and so on, where you can get significantly faster inference speed. So if you're, for example, running 50, 60 frames per second, you can actually like squeeze out like several hundred frames per second, the exact same model, just optimized for the hardware it's running it on. I actually think we should start down here at the bottom. So we also have a table at the bottom. That's basically just the whole table going over the performance benchmarks, the highlights of it, different case studies, when you should use what, because this is actually like pretty important. So the most common ones, when you just use an out the box is PyTorch, so you have the PT extension. This is what you use if you use also Linux directly out of the box, but you can export it, you can just call your model.export to any of these formats, and then there's tons of different arguments that you can specify when you're actually like export, you can find all that in the documentation, but we also cover most of the export formats here on the channel. We have a separate video really going into detail because this is a whole nother world. We have the data set world, we have the model training world, and then we have the inference and act like just model deployment world, which is a whole, complete whole world in itself. And especially these optimization frameworks, it goes down on a very low level because we're working at the hardware level. So PyTorch, we have Torch script here as well. It's a bit better for production than PyTorch and you can also relatively easily use it in C++. You can see the case studies, community support, maintenance, and updates. The main ones is TensRT for NVIDIA hardware. ONX is a pretty standard format. Depends on the runtime that you're using and so on. It can run on any type of hardware, CPU, GPU, all different types of GPU, and most often you convert your PyTorch model into the ONX format for converting it into TensRT, for example, or some of the other frameworks. So we have TensRT, that is the main optimization framework for NVIDIA hardware. We can also see top tier on NVIDIA GPUs, best for NVIDIA hardware, strong network through NVIDIA. So you can use CUDA, TensorRT, you can do all the engine files, you can do TensorRT optimization and so on as well, down to floating point 16, in 8, all that we covered that in the other hardcore videos, so definitely go through that. But the, a difference here is basically like if you run with the PyTorch model, just convert it into a tensor file, to a, an engine file, use TensorRT to run your inference, you basically just get three, maybe four times faster inference speed without really losing accuracy if you only go down to floating point 16 bit, for example. So this is so essential to use when you want to get your models out there and use them in real life because now you can process three or four more camera streams on the exact same GPU or you can go with a lower lower end budget GPU or even just run it on a Jetson Nano device compared to like having a whole server processing. So this is so important that you keep this in mind and know how to do this with also Linux as well when you act like build computer vision systems.
Then we have OpenWinnow for Intel hardware. So this is for Intel ecosystem, solid and computer vision domain. If you want to run inference on CPU, this is a very strong optimization framework. We get very fast inference speed on CPUs. Can easily run in real time on any decent Intel CPU, Intel other things, S device and so on with Intel hardware to have a lot in that space as well. So that's very good for that. Intel 10RT, the standard on X format, and then we have the PyTorch format that we're training the model on and so on. Core ML is when we get into the Apple ecosystem. So it has strong developer support. It's really fast on the Apple hardware, M M M chips, so M1 chips, both on CPU, but also on GPU. This is very awesome. And then once we start to get down to some of the other ones, it's for example, if you want to use inference in the browser with TensorFlow JavaScript, it can also be that you want to use uh, Google's Edge GPU. You can connect to that, like the core, for example, and all that. This is really more for mobile and S devices. We have TF Lite. It is also for S devices and so on, or mobile applications. NCN is also a very good one, mobile and embedded ARM systems. So if you're talking about like server systems, laptop, GPU systems, if you're testing it out and so on on your own, we're talking about these frameworks up here at the top. And then if you want to get into mobile devices, smaller edge devices, internet of things, we're talking about these optimization frameworks down here. And we support all the video analytics. It's just called model of export, specify the format. So this is a very cool table. Definitely go through it in details. So like you can read much more about the details in here, where it's basically just a description of it, but we have videos covering it in significantly more detail. It's so important to know when you're a computer vision engineer. Definitely go in, check it out, test it out with also this as well. I'll just show you here to end it off with. So if you just zoom a bit out, we'll get it at the top. If you go inside our modes, we have our export mode. And if we scroll a bit further down, we can then see the format. So Torch script if you want to convert it into that. Engine, if you want to use 10 to RT, ONNX, we can specify all the other arguments. Image size, if you want to do optimization. In A calibration, dynamic, if you want to have a dynamic input size, for example, like the bat size for ONNX, 10 to RT and open. Vino, simplified with ONNX, it's gonna do some a lot of model optimizations and so on. If you want to optimize our optimized model for batch processing as well, so instead of just running one frame per, 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 per inference, we can actually like do batch running where we pass in 8, 16, whatever batch size into the model at the same time and optimize even the model for handling batch processing as well, together with just running the models as fast as possible. So this is all the different export formats we just saw inside the other table. You see the metadata, the model that we that will get out, all the arguments that you can specify, and we have all the details here. So for example, if you want to export to 10 to RT, image size, half precision, this is floating point 16 bit. As default, they're floating point 32. So if you go down to 16, you actually have half the model size. You don't get 2x speed up, but really close to that. And then if you go down to int 8, you basically just have half of the size of the model again. Then you'll start to lose a bit of accuracy, but it's maybe only a few percentages depending on your applications and projects. This is very cool. Definitely make sure that you know this if you're a computer engineer. Hope you learned a ton. Go through each of them. Check out the other videos that we have on the channel. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.